This video is on maguey or the agave plant. I'll show you in a second. In Nahuatl is metal, M-E-T-L. And this is a plant with which, since ancient times, humans have made an alcoholic beverage. In pre-contact times, it was octli, and now corporations even make tequila. Maguey or agave is a very sacred plant in Mesoamerica. Here we have Mayahuel, the Aztec goddess of this plant, depicted in the Codex Vaticanus A, an early colonial Aztec manuscript. Here are the roots, and these are the leaves or the pencas, and she's the flower over here. And here we have other blooms, and the ubiquitous corn also appears here. Here's the cob, and these are the maize silks. Here's the goddess sitting on the, on the agave or maguey plant. Aztec gods and goddesses, or Aztec divinity, was often related to nature, including the elements, such as wind, water, rain, sun, earth, etc., everything that brings life. Animals, including birds, dogs, deer, snakes, turkey, plants, especially maize and maguey, but many, many others as well. And leaders, or heroes, or ancestors, for example, Quetzalcoatl and Huichilopotli. Quetzalcoatl was, was also a creator god in command of wind. Ancient Mesoamericans, including the Aztecs, used this plant to make numerous products, including rope, sacks, and also, of course, the alcoholic beverage called pulque, or octli in Nahuatl, and pulque is Spanish. When the plant is ready, seven to ten years after planting, it's mature enough to produce aguamiel, literally sweet water. You take out these several leaves and the, at the center of the plant is a little bit of a well that produces sweet or honeyed water. And that water you put on a ceramic clay and you ferment it for up to 20 days and it gives you an alcoholic beverage. It's very viscous, a little bit thick. And here's a picture of a bottle with it. It's highly nutritious as well, and it's a little bit lower, comparatively, it's a little bit lower in alcoholic con content. So it's a little bit harder to get drunk, for example, on this particular drink. And in Aztec society, the elder and nobility could drink this without restrictions. But there were many restrictions on the rest of the population on when or how to drink it or how much. Now, this is the plant that later in the colonial period, and when Mexico became an independent nation, independent from Spain and, and became a, its own country, they began making other alcoholic beverages that were distilled. For example, tequila, which is a type of mezcal, and it's made in the same way, except I'll show you the process in a second, but it's made from the fermented sap of the maguey plant. And this plant, once it's open, can produce up to a thousand liters of aguamiel, and it can stay productive for up to about six months. If you know what you're doing and you do this correctly, it can give you lots, it can yield a lot of agua miel. So I put in here the terminology so that you don't get confused. So the plant in Nahuatl is called metal, and here it is. In Spanish is maguey, in English agave. And then the beverage is the octli or metoctli or pulque in Spanish. And a lot of times these Spanish words are not derivative from Spanish, but it's corrupted now, classical Nahuatl, by the way. So, so this is the pre-contact drink, but then you also make mezcal, including tequila. And these ones are colonial. So here's the plant, and look how huge it is, because here's a man, and the people skilled in doing this, they're called tlachiquero, here he is in a black and white photograph from the 1900s. And he's holding an acocote to get the aguamiel, which is right here. This is so they, they cut. So after, so the metal or the maguey or agave plant, after seven to 10 years from planting, is mature and productive. And there's various signs to know that, including that some of the leaves have lost their sharp edges. Some of them have a very dark tip. And then the flachiquero begins discarding some of the leaves to get to the center of the plant right here. And this is the aguamiel or the sweet or honeyed water that would be fermented. And look over here. I think these are tourists who are very curious about, they're looking at this. 
And this is a little bit like a straw in some ways, but you suckle here and then the, the water gets placed in here and they put it in containers to ferment it. And here's this photograph from the late 1800s titled Pulqueria La Flor Pura in Tacubaya. And Pulqueria would be the place that you go and buy pulque. And just very quickly, I explained briefly the difference between mezcal and tequila. Tequila basically is a type of mezcal. And so mezcal and tequila are agave-based liquors or spirits. But tequila can only be made from the blue agave, whereas mezcal, other types of mezcal, can be made from more than 30 varieties from Mexico. And by the way, Mexico and former Mesoamerica, which includes Mexico and parts of Central America, it's a botanical paradise. There's so many varieties of plants. It's exquisite. It's, it's unbelievable. And most of the tequila is produced in Tequila Jalisco, which was in, I think in 2004 or 2006, became a UNESCO site. But it's also producing the states of Guanajuato, Nayarit, Michoacán, and Tamaulipas. Whereas mezcal is produced in other places, including Durango, Guanajuato, Guerrero, Michoacán, Puebla, Oaxaca, San Luis Potosí, Tamaulipas, and Zacatecas. So consequently, not all mezcal are tequila, or all tequilas are mezcal. So all mezcal are made from the agave's core or the piña. I'll show you a picture in a second. Both processes for mezcal and this type of mezcal tequila, they're cooked in earthen pits or steamed in ovens. And this particular one, the more traditional method is to use volcanic rock, charcoal, and wood, and then you distill in clay pots. And these materials cause the smoky flavor. This one is similar, but it's actually distilled once or twice in copper pots, not clay. This is where you cook the piñas, which is the center of the plant, and this is where the leaves would have been. And piñas is the Spanish word for pineapple, which is what you take from the plant to get to the aguamiel. And these are the oak barrels where the mezcal would, would age. So just very quickly, after the distillation process, which only occurs after the conquest, pre-contact peoples did not do this process to Oakley or Pulque. So as I said, they're made from the sap and from the pineapples I showed you, they're cooked and then aged inside the oak barrels I showed you to produce joven or blanco, silver or white, which is aged up to two months. And then reposado or rested is the aging time, two months to a year. And then añejo, which means aged, at least one year for mezcal and for tequila is from one to two years. Here are some black and white photographs from 1950 by John Gutman, showing the various uses that in the modern period, the descendants of the ancient people of Mesoamerica had for this plant alone. Over here, we see women spinning maguey fiber to make materials for, for these sacks or rope. And here's a man crushing the leaf of the maguey, as you can see here, to extract the pulp of the maguey for making products. So every part of the plant was used. And this is cactus, it's another plant, by the way. People get them confused. And look at the child looking on, and this is how they trained. It's a profession that is dying out, in part due to that maguey is slowly becoming extinct, which I think has a lot to do with, obviously, environmental degradation worldwide, but also with the fact that indigenous peoples have lost a lot of their land and corporations and business interests own this land and use it differently than indigenous peoples do. And here we see a man working out the pulp to free the fiber from the maguey. And here's another person weaving already products. And you can see here is a mat, but that is. Again, every piece of the, of the plant was used. Pads can also be made from this fiber. And here's a tachiquero trying to figure out which plant is ready. As I said, from year 10 to 12, about, develops a spike here, a flower. Once that flower dies out, that's the end of the plant itself, and it dries out to die. But then it leaves pups or little plants that will grow. 
it's a really amazing plant because so much that it gives indigenous people so and everybody in mexico actually because it makes products from every part of the leaf but also the aguamiel is extremely nutritious and given to children early on and once it's fermented it's also very high in nutrients and the aguamiel by the way is only used for oakley oakley or pulque not for the mezcales including tequila those are made for the from the piñas, the sap, not the aguamiel. And as you can see, it's actually a very ancient plant that was used in ancient times as this ceramic vessel with cut maguey leaves here shows. It's from the second century before the common era, or perhaps the third century before the com common era, actually, I made a mistake here. And it's the, from the Colima civilization. This profession of the Tlachiquero requires a lot of training and a lot of botanical understanding about this plant and how to handle all of these materials. Plant itself can be very dangerous. It has a lot of thorns and, sp and spikes here. Somebody who doesn't know what they're doing can be seriously hurt. But also you, understand, you have to understand the chemical properties of these materials because otherwise all that work that goes into making these beverages that are so nutritious will be lost because instead of processing correctly, you will have putrefaction or spoiling. And look at this painting from the Academy by the renowned Mexican artist, Jose Maria Obregón. Oh, I forgot the accent here. From 1869, its title is El Descubrimiento del Pulque, The Discovery of Pulque, or Oakley. It's an oil on canvas. And what we're seeing here is an idealized version of the discovery of pulque. It depicts an event supposedly from 900 of the common era at Tula, the capital city of the Toltec Empire. And here we see the Tlatoani or the ruler, Tecpancalcin, and in front of him are the parents of this young woman named Xochitl. And that word means flower. And over here you see them, they have discovered pulque and they want to tell the king about this drink. Now this painting, like I said, is an idealized version, starting with a very European looking bodies. It attempts some pre-contact conventions, but this is more reminiscent of European art. Moreover, the theme that it represents is also idealized because this event was supposedly from 900 common era. The Tatoani was taken by the maiden, married this young woman because he was overtaken by, by her beauty. So it's like a really idealized and romantic love. When in reality, Mesoamericans figured out how to make pulque thousands of years before this. In fact, one of the first things that all early civilizations do is process some, some type of alcoholic beverage. Indigenous peoples here are depicted as though they were characters in classical Greece or Rome. This can be very dangerous because it separates the descendants of these indigenous people. It tends to create a chasm between modern day indigenous peoples throughout the Americas because the myth that they all disappeared when Europeans arrived is, is just that, a myth. And they continue to live throughout the continent. And in Mesoamerica, modern day Mexico and Central America, the descendants of these indigenous peoples therefore are still there and continue these ancient traditions. That painting is, is reminiscent of this painting, Christopher Columbus at the Court of the Catholic Monarchs by Juan Cordero, another celebrated Mexican artist of the 19th century. And this oil on canvas is of the genre history painting, here featuring Christopher Columbus arriving in Spain at the court of Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand. Columbus brings with him a delegation of indigenous peoples in the lower left corner shown in darkness. And the male has arrows or weapons in his back. But instead of shown standing up, he's submissive. And Europeans here are shown illuminated. 